Let's invite Mr. Bongo to our work today as we create a custom GPT for our company or enterprise using only our internal documents available only to our internal users. But who is Mr. Bongo? Don't worry, you're about to find out. Here we are at the openai.com GPTs page. You can see there's a create button there. So it implies that we can create one if we knew how. And for an idea about what we're trying to build, we can look at examples there. Here are ones that are featured. Here are ones that help with writing. Here are ones that help with productivity. Ones that help with education, many others. But how do we do that exactly? What are the steps? Now, it turns out that Mr. Bongo is Jack Costanzo, who released this LP in 1961, where he demonstrates his Bongo secrets for us one by one, and his listeners are invited to follow along and then do the same. And about 40 years later, Ursula 1000 teamed up with Lemon to create a very clever music track called Mr. Bongo using samples from that, which sounds in part like this. One, two, three, four. We'll hear more of that very soon. So let's build a custom GPT the same way Mr. Bongo would do, so we can follow along and copy the steps. And let's say we want our GPT to be about Nouvelle Cuisine. That's a style of cooking that emerged in France a number of years back, involving more delicate dishes and a big emphasis on how food is presented on the plate. Here are some examples of that. Two, three, four. And of course, if we do a Google search, we'll find plenty of information about that. Apparently, there are 190 million results, as you can see here. And public GPTs can pull from all that same information. It's already online at publicly available sites like this one from Wikipedia or this one from Britannica. But we don't intend to use those sources. Our GPT is going to be used by students in our culinary academy. And we also have a restaurant chain. So we need to disseminate information to the staff in our kitchens about our way of doing Nouvelle Cuisine, not just information in general. And that means we'll need to build a RAG implementation, Retrieval Augmented Generation, where the only information and documents in the system will be the ones that we've hand-picked, and none of that information will be available on the internet. So let's simulate that. And for that, let's go next to Scribd.com and download documents about Nouvelle Cuisine from behind a paywall. Public GPs won't have access to those. And here's the first document. Nouvelle Cuisine Principles. So we'll download that. Here are 10 more documents. And scrolling down, you can see another row. So that's 15 in all. And let's challenge ourselves by incorporating information from a video as well. Here's an hour-long video on YouTube called Food Artisans and Chefs by Jean-Pierre Petit. So let's grab the transcript from that and drop it straight into a text file and upload that too. It'll look like this. So that'll be 16 documents now. And if we add it all up, it's 663 pages in all. Now, let's double check and see what we have here. 
you can see there are seven documents that are PDFs. Six are actually doc files. Two are PowerPoint. And one is that text file we created just now from the video. And that should all be fine. What else? It turns out that most of the documents we downloaded just now are actually in Spanish. Five of them are in English, and there's one in French and one in Portuguese. That should be fine too. And next, we need to check each of those PDFs and be sure that we can select the text in them to indicate that they're OCR readable, like this one. You can see that I've highlighted some of the words in there, and I can copy them and paste them into another document, so I know this one's okay. Here's one that looks very suspicious. Could be a problem, but it's actually okay. As you can see here, I was able to copy and paste the text, so definitely it's okay. But this one is a problem. Every single page is an image of text, but no worries. We can run that one through a paid version of Adobe Acrobat. There's a place where we can tell Adobe that the text is Portuguese, which is what it is, and a couple minutes later, all the pages are OCR readable, so that one's okay now too. The other issue is this file here. You can see it's 463 pages in all, and it has lots of photos, so it's about half a gigabyte. That's too big. That one will get blocked. So what we have to do is save it as, let's say, five separate files of maybe 100 pages or so each. So that way, in the end, we can still get all the content uploaded to the system. So those are examples of some of the kinds of work that we might have to do up front. And there's some other things like that as well, but they can all be done. So with our documents all ready to go, let's log in now to a site that shows just how easy this can be in some cases. Custom GPT.AI, which you can see here. I'll put in the name for my project, Nouvelle Cuisine, and I'll select all those documents. There are 20 of them now, after I saved that big one as five separate files. And I'll drag them in, and they'll start to upload like this. Now you're ready to tackle the basic bongo rhythm beat. uploaded now and here we are at the dashboard and let's see what happens if we ask a question straight up literally without having done anything other than just uploading those 20 documents my first question is what role did Paul Bocuse play in the emergence of Nouvelle Cuisine <laughs> Good answer. And look at this. I can drill down and find out which documents were used as a source for that reply. So that's very good. Now, let's try a more specific type of question. Can I use champagne vinegar in Nouvelle Cuisine? And here's the reply, confirming that I can do so and citing one of those 20 documents. Very good. 
Now, let's ask it a trick question to check to be sure that it's only using information we provided. Who was the fourth president of the United States? The answer is James Madison, by the way. But this GPT should not know that answer because it's not supposed to use information other than what we provided. And also because it's not supposed to be used for general information purposes. So here we go. Now stop this record for a while and practice. Very good. It doesn't have knowledge about that and it's not supposed to. So that's a pretty good little start. We just built a custom GPT that's apparently doing what it's supposed to do. And it was built using documents that are secured behind a paywall. So that was a private GPT we just made. And we might have something pretty tasty in there. So now it's time to see what even better creations you might put together in a similar way. Mr. Bongo steps aside and you're on.